a No More Stinky Monkeys dot com production. David Letterman just went off the air last week, and while it was sad to see him go, I have to admit he was a shadow of his former self for far too long, really since he moved to CBS. But back in his NBC days, his show was pure and wonderful anarchy. And among the many things he did right back then was to have musical guests who were not on just to promote some new record, but forgotten stars of yesteryear to remind us of the music we used to love and maybe forgot about, and a chance to have them introduced to the MTV generation. One of these nights, he had on the lead singer, keyboard player, and writer of most of the songs for this next act. This man sang a medley with Paul Schaefer and the world's most dangerous band, and it was an explosive eye-opening night for me. I was about 15 or 16, and I had heard many of these songs through the years on oldies radio, WCBS FM, but never realized they were all made by the same band. When I think of this next act, I think of Sunday barbecues or days at the beach, because their music is heard best on a lazy summer day. Few bands ever made it better, blue-eyed soul than, than them, and in fact, some people think they were a Motown act. This is why they are number 164, the Rascals, or really, the Young Rascals. Former members of Joey D and the Starlight has formed a new band in Garfield, New Jersey called the Rascals, but another group named Harmonica Rascals objected to it, so they managed to change the name to the Young Rascals. In February 65, they made their TV debut on Hullabaloo with their first single, but it didn't go anywhere. However, their next one, Good Lovin', hit number one in the U.S. and Canada. It was a remake of Let Me Be Good, an Olympian song, which, but with much different lyrics. Then they made You Better Run, which didn't do well, but was a big hit for Pat Benatar in 1980. And then the top 20 hits came out like pellets in a monkey cage. I've Been Lonely Too Long, Groovin', and A Beautiful Morning. As popular as they were in the States, they were even more popular in Canada for some reason. Their last big American hit was in 1968 with People Got to Be Free, about racial intolerance. They were strong-minded and refused to play in segregated concerts. After so much early success, they quieted it down and eventually disbanded in 1972. But lead vocalist Felix Cavalieri appeared on that Letterman show I told you about. And in 1988, the band reunited for the Atlantic Records 40th anniversary show at Madison Square Garden. In 1997, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame by E Street Band's little Stephen Van Zandt, who was a huge fan. Grooving on a Sunday afternoon from the Federal.